in the field, on the field, everything we do, we dominate. That means kill a fly with a sledgehammer. But it's not about the fly you just did. It's about the other fly that's watching. Welcome to another edition of Inside South Carolina State Athletics as we talk Bulldog football with South Carolina State head coach Jennis Barrett. On Saturday, the Bulldogs headed down to Statesboro, Georgia to take on the Georgia Southern Eagles. Georgia Southern comes away with a 42-14 win. And, Coach, you look at that score, you think blowout, but this game was anything but a blowout. No, not at all, man. Our guys performed well. They did some good things. So, Congratulations to Georgia Southern. They, they won a football game, and our mission every week doesn't change. It's to try to go 1-0, and uh, that didn't happen. But I'm very, very proud of our football team. The resilience they showed throughout in hostile territory, you know, uh, it was a definitely a, a a great crowd and a lot of excitement in the air. But those guys, you know, I, I got our guys to understand all week. Just play the guys in front of you. Just go compete. Play for sixty minutes. Give it all you got. And let the chips fall where they may. And I was very very proud of our football team. And I said to coach earlier, I've seen every Georgia Southern South Carolina State football game, and I have to admit, this was the first time, coach, we had a chance to win this football game. We, we actually did. You know, uh, they went up 7 to nothing on us, and then we came right back and tied it at 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, but, you know, just through it all, I, I, I just really proud of our guys, you know, and they competed. There's some guys that showed that they really belong and uh, did some really good things, some things we got to clean up. You know, things we've been talking about, making sure we can work on is our footwork, our fit, our finish, our pad level, our fundamentals, and that's what we got to get better at. And we got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot with what I call – self-inflicted negatives, uh, which are sins. But we'll get better. We'll continue to grow. But I really, really love this football team, and I like the direction that we're headed. And I think we got a chance to have a special year in 2024. You know, we committed one of those sins on a position, which ended up early in the ball game, giving Georgia Southern a short field. They went eight plays, 49 yards, and scored. But Coach Eric Phoenix brought us back out, and we went down the field, 12 plays, 75 yards, and it sounds like a church mice in that stadium. Yeah, we did a good job of engineering a long drive. You know, to go 12 plays uh, and be able to chew up some clock and, and get first downs against a team like Georgia Southern, very, very proud of our guys. And like you say, Eric Phoenix did a good job of just engineering an efficient drive. You know, our guys competed. Like I tell them all the time, I know that we played against an FBS program, but football is football. We're going to go compete against 11 people across from us, and I thought we did a good job throughout that game. But I was very proud of those young men on that drive. I thought that drive was big time uh, to be able to seal that with a touchdown. So, again, we had the opportunity to tie the game up 7-7. Seven seven. So, Coach, we don't talk a lot about your decisions, but you had a fourth down and goal from the four that stuffed us. You go back and forth and forth on the goal. A lot of times you go and say, oh, we're going to kick the field goal. You decide to go for it, and then you run right up the middle behind that big offensive line. I mean, I, I really believe in being an old line guy myself, you got to put confidence in the big boys and show them that you believe in them in those type of situations. And they went out and did exactly what we asked them to do, and they moved people vertically, and uh, we found a way to get DeAndre Duarte in the end zone. Tough thing for South Carolina State, though, because Georgia Southern comes right back, kind of reminiscent of the Citadel a little bit, and they went right down the field, and they go up 14-7. Yeah, and, I, and we talked about that as a, as a staff, that, you know, when we get those long drives, we can't let teams score that fast. And that was a, it was a quick score, and it starts with special teams. It's about field position. Uh, our defense had to start in kind of bad field position, and then they ran a couple of trick plays, and I think they emptied out the barrel. I think they ran every trick play in their playbook. Uh, against us this past week. But, you know, kudos to our defense. They do some good things, and it's hard to just continuously drive the ball down the field, just miraculously just, you know, run past. So they had some trickery going, and they was able to hit a couple big plays on us, and then they jumped up 14-7. to Special teams played a huge part in this game. Kyle Gallegos had, a t- Gallegos had a tough ball game, missed a couple field goals, Coach, but then on the other side of special teams, uh, Dyson Roberts was just out of this world on Saturday night. Yeah, we, we, we definitely miss some missed opportunities. I mean, when you get the ball in field goal range, you got to put it through the uprights. And, and like you said, uh, we missed a couple opportunities where we could have got points because we had good drives going. We were moving the ball. But when you come away with zero points, it's kind of demoralizing. It kind of crushes the team. Uh, but back to Dyson Roberts, man, he flipped the field again. He was magnificent. magnificent. He did a great job of getting punts over 40 yards. I think he averaged 42 yards a punt. This past week, man, but I'm really, really proud of how Dyson Roberts is really binding to his role, especially as our punter and flipping fields for us. 
Who were the first half minute? South Carolina State trailing Georgia Southern 21 to 7. Coach, what was the mood, the attitude going into the locker room? Well, uh, the guys were still believing. You know, when I went into the halftime, first thing I always do is talk to the coaches. Things that we're doing good, things that we need to clean up. And I was proud of our guys. And the, a lot of it was self inflicted. We got to clean up those self inflicted or those penalties are putting us in mad situations. And one of the things that we will address is eliminating the sins. All right, has nothing to do sometimes with the opponent. It's us versus us. And we have to do a better job as we continue to go through the season is eliminating those deals. But just wanted to encourage them that everything that we're giving uh, Georgia Southern has nothing to do with Georgia Southern. It's us. And we have to do a good job of cleaning that up. The guys were believing, coming out the locker room, ready to go. And uh, we always talk about that middle eight, the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half. And I thought our guys had the right mindsets. They really came out of that locker room believing you know, and I really like our, the attitude of our football team. It's always positive with the guys as well. You know, sometimes you get into those moments and you start seeing guys starting to point fingers, but you see none of that with the Bulldogs. They are they understand that each of us needs all of us. We is greater than me, and our guys are really doing a good job of buying into it. All right, it's that time we talk about the Prisma Health Injury Report for the Georgia Southern football game. Coach, you had a couple guys go down. Keenan Liggins went out of the game, walked off in his own power. A couple of the guys injured Bailey. This was a physical football game against Georgia Southern. Well, you know, anytime you get an opportunity to go play any game, let alone playing up, it's going to be a physical uh, wear and tear on your football team. But I think our guys, for the most part, they're fine. You know, some bumps and bruises here and there. Uh, and like I say, we're, we're going to do this whole entire week is working with us. And first and foremost, we got to get healthy because uh, we're banged up right now and going into this thing. We're going to get some guys back so they can be 100% when we get ready for A&T next week. All right, we'll take a time out here. That's the Prism Health Injury Report for the Georgia Southern game. We're going to come back with the coach's spotlight. We're after these messages on this edition of the Chenis Berry Show. A single moment can ignite a passion. With every play, a spirit of teamwork is forged and determination evolves into success. Life is the ultimate team sport and a trusted teammate makes all the difference. Our team at Founders Federal Credit Union works hard every day to offer the financial tools you need backed by unrivaled member service. Relax, you're with Founders. No one takes care of families like Prisma Health. As South Carolina's largest health system, we have nearly 600 primary care doctors across the Midlands and upstate. So you can choose the one who's right for you with a more personalized approach, more locations, and more convenience, including 24-7 virtual urgent care and online or in-person visits with your primary care doctor. We're doing even more to help you be your healthiest you. Prisma Health, the primary care experts. All right, welcome back to the Tennis Berry Show as we talk with South Carolina State football coach Tennis Berry. It's time for our coach's spotlight. Coach, we're going to spotlight this evening. Well, we're going to spotlight Kevin King. Kevin King is our special teams coordinator as well as our safety coach. And I'll tell you what, very, very pleased with Coach King. He's a young man that, I'll tell you what, has a bright future in this profession. Man, he's, a, he's a humble young man. He works his tail off. Uh, with our special teams as well as with our safety. And like I say, I think he's got a bright future in this profession. All right, let's meet Coach Kevin King. Hi, I am Coach King, and this is the Coach's Spotlight. Coach King, Special Teams Coordinator and Safety Coach. Can you tell us about your playing and coaching career and how it impacts the special team and safety's position? So I started playing in the year 2010. Um, I was at Southern University at A&M College. I played there for five years. I played corner and some safety, and I also played on a lot of special teams. Um, that's how I really translate. Um, I just sitting around, picking up, talking to the coaches. I picked up everything I really needed to know about special teams by just really talking to the coaches. And secondary play, playing corner and safeties, it just translated really well for me in the coaching. Um, it's just like second second nature now. I know everything about the secondary play because I played I played the position. Really, how did you and Coach Barry cross paths? So me and Coach Barry crossed paths at Southern University. Um, he was the offensive coordinator in 2013, his first year. I played defense. Um, that's the year we won our first championship at Southern University. Um, after I got done playing, I hopped right into being a graduate assistant for Southern University. And me and Coach Barry literally sat side by side in the box. 
and I just took heed of everything he used to say to me. Um, picked up a lot of, a lot of traits from him. I'm um, just sitting in the, bo the booth with him, listening to him, talk to the coaches, and relay, relay the plays and everything. So that's the, really the way we cross paths. Safeties are usually the last line of defense. Uh, how has your preparation prepared them for this year, mentally and physically? So it prepared them mentally and physically because we, I, I have to let those guys know, like you said, we're the last line of defense. Not only that, we control our whole defense. Uh, we make the checks. We get guys lined up um, based off the formation guys come out in. Uh, we are responsible for making checks. So those guys know how important their role lives in our defense. So I just try to harp on them about knowing the whole defense, not just what the secondary does, but the linebackers as well as the D-line, so they can know the mindset Coach O'Daffer is, is in when he's calling the call. Uh, this year we brought back experienced partners and kickers, plus added some new ones. Uh, how has the competition been and what will it take for someone to win the job? It's always good to bring in new competition with you know, old, older guys that's already here because they have experience. Uh, but the cream will always rise to the top, you know. Um, it's nothing, it's friendly competition at the end of the day. Um, you just got to go in and do your 111, keep your head down, put the ball through the uprights. Um, we ask our punters to put the ball on the numbers, the outside of numbers. So um, the person who does what we exactly what we say do, when we say do it, that's the person who's going to win the job. You've never been afraid to put in the work. The extra early, extra late, extra, extra work. Because you understand that education is the key that unlocks everything. Better pay, better hours, better opportunities, a better you. And playing the lottery is no different. Getting educated before you play gives you the tools you need to be a better player, like knowing when to play and when to take a rain check. Visit sceducationlottery.com slash better you to be a better player. Why do we travel? Why do we fly? Are we called by the excitement of untold adventures in faraway places? Driven to shape the future of our world or to share our world with future generations? We designed Columbia Metropolitan Airport for you and her and them. So when the day arrives for your next journey, we'll be ready to get you there. Columbia Metropolitan Airport, fly with ease. Welcome back to the Tennis Berry Show. It's the second half now. Bulldogs trailing 21-7 coach. And it was at this point in the football game that it kind of got away from us. It's important to get a fast start. At this point, at 21-7, we're believing. You know, it's a couple players away from getting right back in the ball game. And we talk about that middle eight with that first four of the second half. It's critical. It's very, very critical. And uh, unfortunately, we had a kickoff on that drive and uh, they end up getting a really good field position. So now they're starting with a short field. Five plays later, they're in the end zone. So now they're up 28-7. to seven. But, you know, through it all, we can't have those moments because there's only about five or six plays in the football game that can really change the game. And we always talk about a fast start. And we didn't have the fast start that we wanted in the second. And, you know, that kind of dictated what you do now on offense because instead of running the ball, you got to pick up the pace a little bit, try to score quickly. And for the first time this season – we turn the football over, pick six from Eric Phoenix. You know, you're exactly right. You know, going into the game, we wanted to run the football. But sometimes when the score, you know, dictates that, you have to pick it up and throw it. So we threw the ball a lot more than what we wanted to. And uh, we weren't able to get the running game going the way we'd like to. But now we have to pass the football. And you're exactly right. Eric Phoenix has been doing a great job the entire season of taking care of the football. And unfortunately, he made a good read but he had to kind of put the ball, he put the ball a little bit behind the receiver and they were able to get an interception. And unfortunately, whenever you get an interception, that's already bad enough. But when they turn it into six points, uh, it makes it a little tough. So right. instead of now just kind of settling for that coach, the offense comes back on the field, they settle down. You go back to the short passes. K9 ended up for the day, 10 catches on the day. I think Justin Smith-Brown had six catches on the day. We go down the field, nine plays, 75 yards, earn some respect. Get the football back in the end zone. Guys don't quit. That's that, that play the next play mindset. And uh, our guys took the ball right down the field. Nice drive. Took the ball down the field and ended the thing with a nice touchdown with DeAndre Duhar. It was a tough day for South Carolina State Bulldogs. Go down to Georgia Southern 42-14. Going to take a time out here. When we come back, we're going to go in the player's spotlight. We're going to meet linebacker Aaron Smith. 
on this edition of the Jenis Berry Show. Hey, grab me one too. Come to South Carolina State University. Here you'll find unlimited possibilities for wherever you want your college career to take you. Since 1896, we've trained generations of scholars and leaders, building a legacy of excellence. Explore our stellar academic programs, including nuclear engineering, military science, biology, education, computer science, agribusiness, and more. Enjoy student-focused activities and organizations and discover your passion. Dare to be great. Enroll now and join our legacy of excellence at South Carolina State University. All right, it's time for the player spotlight on this edition of the Tennis Berry Show. We're going to meet linebacker Aaron Smith, coach, who is quite a player on the field and off the field. Unbelievable human being, Aaron Smith. Man, we love him on this football team. He's a great leader, great person, first and foremost. Great human being. All right, and an unbelievable football player. We're glad to have him on our football team. Uh, he does it in the classroom. He does it in the community. He does it on campus, and he does it on the football field. So we're grateful to have Harry Smith in our program. All right, let's meet Aaron Smith. Hey, man, how you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. I got back out here on the field today, started doing some running, so I'm feeling good, man. Uh, man, you look good, man. Hey, man. Hey, it's part of it. Man, I see you 220. 225. 220, oh, I got it. Uh, yeah, stop playing, man. <laughs> Aaron, how have the transitions between head coaches been for you personally and then for the team? The transition has been well, you know, going into my senior year, this is another year I have to learn a new defense, but that's fine with me. You know, I've been adapting to the defense, learning it, taking control of it, and just trying to lead the troops. Aaron, in your opinion, what is the strength of this group of linebackers? In my opinion, the strength of this linebacker core is just understanding the urgency of now, actually trying to get better in the film room. As you know, playing linebacker, a lot of things impact us from the front end to the back end. So actually understanding and learning what coaches teach us in the classroom and trying to apply it to the actual field. How do you feel about the team's leadership council and the role it plays? Uh, the team leadership council is a great group of guys. Uh, everybody in the council is a senior. This is their last go around itself for one guy. Uh, in the meetings with Coach Barry, we are very open and honest and we bring, we are basically the voice, the voice of the team straight to Coach Barry. So we actually do a good job, communicate with, e with each other outside of the meetings. Uh, we talk about things that's going on with the team and how we can face it and things of that nature. So I, I feel great about our, our leadership council. What are some goals for this team that you have and how do you think it's possible to reach them? Uh, it's simple. Like Coach Barrett said, the goal is just go one and know every day. Try to go one and know. And one and know every day is going to lead to going one and know in the weeds and then just one game at a time. Just chalk wood, carry water. What's your major and what interests do you have the offer? Uh, my major, I actually graduated uh, in the spring with a bachelor's in exercise science. Right now I'm taking four undergraduate classes, about to get a bachelor's in physical activity management in December. Uh, my goal is just to soon open up a gym, but I also want to pursue my master's in nutritional sciences and maybe go to school for my daughter in physical therapy. So when I open up my gym, I can run all I want in my, West, my one facility. I don't have to go nowhere else. Aaron, thank you for joining our show. We appreciate having you here this week. Thank you for having me. This is the player spotlight. Your home is where your memories live, where you laugh and where you love. We understand the importance of the valuables under your roof, tangible and intangible alike. So no matter what's around the corner, we'll be there. Offering you and your family the support that's made Farm Bureau Insurance a trusted name for nearly 70 years. You deserve more. You deserve a promise. All right, welcome back to the Chinese Berry Show. It's time for the Davis Toyo, the keys to the game. And that coupled with the bye week coach, with the keys, a lot of things that uh, we need to do during this time off. Well, we're going to focus on us. Make sure that we can just get better, you know, on the little fundamental things. You know, things like footwork, fit, finish, hat placement, effort, all those little small things that can come back and haunt you. 
when it's all said and done. But I really, really feel good about this football team. The number one thing we're going to do is get some rest and get healthy. Because right now we're a banged up football team, and uh, we really want to work on that during this off week. But it's more of a us versus us type deal as opposed to getting ready for a really, really good a and football team. Of course, that's going to be Hall of Fame weekend on September 28th when the Bulldogs take on the North Carolina a Aggies. The Hall of Fame ceremony tonight before September 27th. But, Coach, we want folks to have to deal with what we've had to deal with the past three weeks. That's big crowds at uh, the Citadel, at Florida a and at Georgia Southern. We need the folks to come out to Orangeburg in two weeks. Listen, man, I'm so excited. I'm ready to see all of your faces in the place in Bulldog Stadium, man. I'm ready to rock and roll, man. I'm so excited about it all. You know, I've been hearing about Bulldog Nation coming out and supporting, and I want to see it with my own two eyes. I'm super excited about it. So go out and get your tickets. Get out and get your tickets. We want to see all your faces in the place. We really do because we're super excited about having a packed, packed stands. Our young men, our student athletes deserve it. They deserve to look up in those stands and see that garnet in blue rocking the house with a little past the peas. Hey, let's get up for the Bulldogs. I want to hear all that. I'm ready to turn it up, and I'm excited about getting Oliver C. Dawson Stadium as we can, you know, as we prepare for a good North Carolina a and It's an old Miag rival, man, coming back in our house. Excited to see it. I'll tell you something. There's some rivalry between folks South Carolina State, North Carolina a and They smile a lot, but there's a lot of trash talking. Going to be going on in two weeks. We hope to see you there. I want to thank our sponsors, of the Tennis Berry Show, Founders Federal Credit Union, Prisma Health, South Carolina Educational Law, Orangeburg County, Healthy Blue, Pepsi, MUSC, Food Lion, their Sack to Give Back program, and Davis Toyota with the keys to the game. Thank you for joining us on the Tennis Berry Show. We hope to see you next week, right here once again on the Tennis Berry Show. Go dogs. On the field, everything we do, we dominate. That means kill a fly with a sledgehammer. But it's not about the fly you just killed. It's about the other flies that's watching.